You're watching Swipe coming up on this week's show. Angela's finding out how to make money on social media. I meet a rising Instagram star trying to make us all look beautiful. And Gav's at the helm of a Starfleet ship for this week's Games Review. Welcome to the show. Here on Swipe, we love a bit of social media. You'll already know that if you follow us on Twitter. So this week, we decided to hone in on social media influencers, the people turning their online followings into an income. Here's Angela. I was making like about a thousand, between a thousand dollars and a thousand pounds a day. And then it stayed like that for years and years and years. And I ended up making more than a million and maybe 1.5 million or something. And then I bought a property in, in London and I bought a property in, in Bangkok. Through his love of travelling and sharing his experiences online, 32-year-old Johnny Ward has managed to turn online clicks into a lot of cash. Travel blogging is now his full-time job, thanks to building a big audience and subsequently getting paid by sponsors. But there's some controversy over the ethics of some bloggers because of a lack of official regulation. We have arrived in Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea. This British blogger was criticised for his trip to North Korea, appearing to show it as a paradise. However, he denied accusations that he was being paid by the regime. Instagram and Snapchat stars with lots of followers are also getting paid vast amounts of money to post about products. And digital agencies are big business now, representing and matching them up with advertisers. So what makes someone stand out and how do they make sure they're posting responsibly? We kind of specialise in basically connecting brands, talent and audiences. Um, we work with a lot of high profile kind of talent, um, mainly in the music and entertainment space. Um, I would say when we're sort of looking at who we're, we're working with, um, it's really about talent um, with high reach in some occasions, but also really high engagement. Our advice always to both talent and brands is always to be very transparent about any commercial relationship. The experts say to grow your audience, you should only share useful or valuable content, and only 20% of it should be about you. Advice also includes identifying trends and engaging with followers, and of course, doing it all responsibly. The entire process requires a lot of dedication, a lot of passion, um, a bit of luck as well, but it's also very important which niche topic you're focusing on, right? So, um, and what, what your target audience is as well. So I think if you, if you try to uh, match all these ingredients, um, there's a good chance you're going to succeed, but you always need to be prepared. That's not going to be the case. With at least 2.3 billion active social media users around the world, brands are adapting to the changing way we consume content and products, leaving the online world wide open for anyone to make a profit. You will start to enjoy life more. The more you say yes to things. Angela Barnes, Sky News. Stay with us. Still to come, I'll be finding out what the daily workload is like for a fashion and beauty blogger. That's coming right up after a roundup of this week's tech news. NASA scientists have been putting the finishing touches to a solar powered robotic spacecraft. It's been designed to get up close to the asteroid Bennu and collect samples that could help astronomers get information for protecting Earth from future potential asteroid collisions. It's due to launch next month. A Norwegian startup has come up with a way to keep children with long term illnesses connected to their school friends and lessons while they're at home recovering. An avatar robot can be controlled by the child from home with cameras, microphones, and speakers, so they can even contribute to the class but without actually being in the room. Parents are due to spend £397 per household on back to school gadgets for their children this year, almost triple the spend seen last year. That's according to a report by YouSwitch. Research has also found 95% of mums and dads think tech will improve their child's future career prospects. The team behind this YouTube channel, which claims to help your pooch fall asleep, says it's getting 4 million views per month. Relax My Dog develops music techniques to help canines with anxiety problems. Coming up, we're on a mission in space with the new Star Trek virtual reality title. But first... So now we know how social media influencers are turning clicks into cash, but what's a typical working day like? Keeping all those followers interested, I met Sophie Hannah Richardson, a fashion and beauty blogger, to find out. 
Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I'm covered in so much glitter and sequins and I absolutely love it. Sophie Hannah Richardson has certainly developed a unique brand. Her YouTube channel describes her as the green-haired personal style blogger and there can't be many of those. Hi everyone, so you're probably wondering what is on my head right now. Her videos, including hair and beauty tutorials, have been watched more than half a million times. But it's Instagram where she's got her biggest audience, with 180,000 followers when we put this week's swipe together. So no wonder big name beauty companies are keen to have her review their products. So how do you actually make money from what you're doing? So brands will approach me via email mostly and they will ask me to create sponsored content, whether that's a blog post, it might be a sponsored YouTube video or an Instagram post, and I kind of charge a fee per um, content. That money has been good enough for Sophie to make this her full-time career. What's a day's work like? One day I could be shooting outfit pictures, the next I might be in London, I've got lots of meetings. Another day I might be at a festival or at a blogger event in the evening, so it's never ever the same. Here are my five different hairstyles that are really easy and quick. Trying out new looks might sound like fun, but there's a lot more to being a blogger. Uh, I don't think people realise the amount of hard work that us bloggers do. A lot of the time we get comments and they say, oh, well, you're just kind of just wearing a dress. But it's not that, it's the thought process that even goes into styling an outfit. Then we have to edit our pictures. We edit our own videos. We've got to film the videos. So it's a lot of hours that goes into it. Do bloggers ever get jealous of each other? Unfortunately, I think sometimes they do. It's a shame because there are little clicks and I've heard stories from other bloggers about some bloggers kind of trying to steal their following and things like that which I think is petty because it's such a nice little community and I've made amazing friends from blogging and I think we can support each other by sharing each other's content. Do you have haters? I do on Instagram mostly. Um, it, it's hard when you when you get these comments. I do now block the people because most of the time they're not even following me anyway. They've just obviously stumbled ac across my picture. I just don't understand when people feel the need to to comment negatively. Why is it you think that people follow you? My hair. <laughs> I think this year my focus has kind of been trying to be the blogger that everyone comes to for something a bit different. That's kind of been my objective. And that's how she means to go on. Sophie says she's excited to see where her next step will take her. Now it's time for our games review, including a new release from an independent developer here in the UK. Here's Gab. So last week I went to Cologne to Gamescom, which is the biggest game show in the world apparently, and there's a lot of people there. And I saw a bunch of new cool stuff, some not so cool stuff as well, but I'm going to talk to you about the cool stuff. But first of all, I saw Little Nightmares, and unfortunately, the first game I saw was probably the best game I saw, so kind of everything went downhill for the rest of it. But it's brilliant, it's like a little really creepy 2.5D platformer. It's made by some of the guys who did work on things like Tearaway Unfolded and Little Big Planet. And at first glance, you think it looks quite a nice kind of game like those games, but it's actually really creepy and it's meant to be based on children's nightmares. So every room kind of changes. Like there was one room I was hanging out in an abattoir doing this weird sausage puzzle. And then I swung on the sausages through to a different room that was filled with children's shoes. So yeah, it's a really creepy game and I just really want to play more of it. Another game that I played was called The Bunker, which is made by Wales Interactive. And I'm Welsh, so I was obviously going to like it. Uh, but the game is actually really good. It's really strange. It's kind of like an FMV point-and-click uh, like mystery game. Apparently, it's only about two and a half hours long. I played an hour of it, so I got pretty far into the story. But it's this, it's this really weird mystery about a guy who's grown up in this bunker his whole life. And apparently, it's like a real... Uh, sort of underground bunker that these guys found and they were able to film in but you're not quite sure what's going on um, and you're trying to solve these different puzzles early on something really bad happens to you and you're kind of dealing with that but this is a guy who's never been outside of his room so you kind of have to deal with a lot of mental stuff where he doesn't like doing things that break his routine and basically you're here to break his routine so you end up feeling pretty bad about it 
Everybody who likes Star Trek has probably dreamed about taking control of the Enterprise, and Star Trek Bridge Crew literally lets you do that. So it's an Oculus Rift game. You have to have four Oculus Rift to be able to play it or be played online with your friends. I was playing in a room with three other people. One person's a captain, one person's in charge of shields and stuff, one person's in charge of life support, and everyone's got their own little jobs to do, and the captain tells you what to do. So I was in charge of shields and torpedoes, and you got a little console in front of you and you can see your hands but obviously they're not your hands reaching out and touching the console and it really feels like you're actually in control of the enterprise uh, it was one of the best games i've ever played but unfortunately it's one of those things where i'm probably never going to be able to recreate that experience again because i need people i need four oculus rifts four high-end pcs running that so it's going to be quite hard to recreate that but if I can somehow do that, then I really want to play it again because you kind of feel like it would be more fun if the mission was going badly. Our mission went perfectly, and I kind of want to see what it's like if I was in the captain's chair, because I'm sure it probably wouldn't go as well. We are Starfleet. Well, that's it for this week. Don't forget, you can watch any of our episodes on our YouTube playlist. Just type in Sky News Swipe. And stay up to date with all the latest tech stories on Sky News on mobile, tablet, catch-up, SkyCube and Snapchat. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.